Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Meet the Pros here at Echo Means Business. Uh, I'm Sam Fiorella. I'm one of the administrators here at Echo Means Business. And today we've got Jason Curley uh, from Jason's Lawn and Landscape in Wichita Falls, Texas. Thanks for joining, Jason. Hey, thanks for having me. Awesome. So we want to um, uh, let the audience know a little bit more about you. You have been uh, active in the Echo Means Business community and mobile app, um, and we're trying to shine a light on members, uh, you being one of them today. So why don't you uh, give us a little bit of background into uh, your business? Um, you know, I've just I've already mentioned that you're from Wichita Falls, Texas, but uh, Tell us the type of work that your business does, the size of your area, all that kind of stuff. Um, the the type of work I do is um, your basic landscaper. I mean, I, I mow grass, I do flower bed maintenance, uh, a little bit of tree trimming, uh, shrub maintenance. I could do sod jobs. I could do almost anything. When it comes to uh, sounds like a, sounds like a good tagline for your business. I'll do almost anything. <laughs> I've gotten a lot of jobs that nobody else wanted. I know that, um, but it's uh, it's the area is pretty small, kind of. But there's an insane amount of companies here, and there's no shortage of work. But just it, I don't understand how there could be so many, and then not have a problem getting jobs. You know, but I'm I'm not complaining either. Do you? Uh, well, that well, that's a good problem to have, I guess. But if it is even a problem, do you actively go out and look? for new work or does it just fall in your lap if there's so much around it's uh kind of a little bit of both um i get a lot of work from my regular customers you know telling their neighbors or whoever and, uh and then i also get a lot of work from people just seeing me out all right so the uh how, how many uh what's the size of your uh your client base right now how many properties do you manage on an average week I've got, uh, well, on an average week, because most of mine are bi-weekly, so one week it'll be a, a one group, and then one week it'll be a group. But uh, between both weeks, I've got about 20 properties. Do you find that that's common in the southern states, you know, that one week on, one week off? Because I know a lot of the people that we talk to in our community that are in the northern states or in Canada, um, you, they have to cut every week uh, because the graph just grows too long. Um, it's... It's kind of common, but then it's not. It's it's really, the, it's more on the customer. Um, some customers don't have irrigation and they don't water. Uh, we had a lot of rain. It just now kind of quit raining around the end of July. And so now it's starting to get dry, kind of slow. But there for a while, it was just constant rain and nobody had to water their grass. And there was just work everywhere. That's interesting. Do you... Uh... <laughs> I know that in the Midwest, anyway, there's a, a lot of uh, a lot of the pros right now are complaining about the amount of rain. Uh, you must be happy when it rains. <laughs> they can send us some of that rain right now. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it has a. Uh, this is the one thing that I just from on a personal level, I'm really fascinated on in this industry. Uh, when you take a look at the various geographies we have, from you know Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, to southern U.S., to Miami, um, you know, to Texas, uh, to the Midwest, to Rhode Island, all of the places that our, our pros come from, there is such diversity in what they, how they run their businesses and how they're forced to run their businesses and even what they complain about, even when it comes to the rain. Uh, you know, like I said, in the Midwest right now, a lot of people are complaining that they can't get out and cut grass because it's rain, it won't stop raining some rain for you would be good because I'm assuming that's going to then increase the amount of times you're needed to maintain a property. Right. right. Yeah. So the, um, is this something that you've been, you're doing full time or is this a side hustle for you? It's a, uh, it's a side job for right now. Um, I'm still having to work full time. I work uh, every day from seven to three 30 then work for myself from three 30 to get finished. But eventually, um, down the road, I want to, be able to quit working full time. Work for myself. How long have you been uh, uh, running this business part time? Since uh, the end of April, probably. Um, like I've, I've always, I've worked for somebody else. You know, over the last eighteen years, as as a landscaper, I've always worked for someone else. 
this is the first year that I decided to break out on my own. Well, that's cool. Good luck with that. Uh, definitely, we want to hear that those stories uh, on uh, on the community as you comment and engage other people. But let me ask you a little bit more about that. I'd, I'm curious how you're managing the the running of a business and working full time. Um, that that seems like a, a heavy workload, and then also I'm assuming having some kind of a personal life. It's uh, it's been a struggle trying to adjust to it. It is it is a lot because it does take a lot of time, especially uh, when I'm doing. I don't have any other employees, so I'm doing all the work myself, and then trying to manage it, schedule things, you know, equipment stuff like that. Sometimes I don't get in um, from out of my shop until ten or eleven o'clock. Mm. It, it has put a strain on things personally with uh, my personal life, but we've we've been able to you know work around it. And uh, my fiance is, is very proud of me. She sees how happy I am doing it, and so she. You know, it just wants me to, to be happy. I love that. I love hearing that. That's a great thing. If there are others that are listening uh, or watching, uh, you know, this will be, uh, this is one of the shorts that we have on our podcast, uh, but also on our networking uh, area of Echo Means Business. Uh, so depending, regardless of where they're watching or listening, uh, if there's others like you who are you know working for somebody or running their own business in another industry and considering moving into this full time what are some of the pitfalls that you didn't plan on that you now realize holy crap i got to deal with this and this is more difficult than i anticipated what should they be preparing themselves for really honestly just be prepared for everything to be different no job no two jobs are the same no two customers are the same. Um, you might have a customer that you never talked to and everything's fine. You get paid all the time. Then you might have a customer that always every week wants to, you know, nitpick or do something hmm. and just, just be prepared for everything to be different every time. Yeah. That, that, that's a sage advice. Uh, you know, it's, I've been, I've been doing a ton of these interviews, uh, over the last year in particular. Um, uh, and, I've noticed that one of the skill sets when I ask the question, like, what's one of the skill sets that you think, uh, you know, you need to have to be a really good lawn care pro? I'm surprised at the number of times people say good customer skills is the number one, uh, uh, I guess, skill to have. Not, you know, you've got to be really good with tools. You've got to really be, you know, a really uh, specific, uh, you know, an anal retentive about your lines and, you know, or that you have to know a lot about horticulture. Customer service, you know, is the one big thing you reference there are some customers that always want to talk to you. How important would you place customer service on that list of skills for somebody looking to get into this business full time? It's, it's very important. I mean, because you have to have a friendly demeanor. You you want to be approachable, you know. Um, it, I, I think it's very important. And it's it's very important to know how to talk to the customer not sound like you're condescending uh, that really irritates a lot of people i've, I've had i've worked with guys to do that and they you know, it's not good yeah but i would think it's very important my uh my mama always used to say you can attract more bees with honey than you can with vinegar so having a little bit of a silver tongue and understanding when to bite it uh is uh, goes a long way i find in uh, in any business that you're trying to run on the flip side of that, uh, would you consider yourself a gearhead? Uh, not really. Um, I, I I know how to work on my own equipment, and uh, I can I can do small stuff to my vehicles, you know. But I'm not I'm not anyway in any way, shape, or form a mechanic at all. You must have a good relationship with a uh, an equipment dealer uh, down there for for maintenance and repairs. Then no. Uh yeah. Yeah, I've got a couple of friends that work for different uh, dealers down here. But for the most part, all my stuff is still under warranty. So I, you know, I think about <laughs> dealer. If, there's, if there's something serious, I'll let them mess with it, you know. <laughs> you gotta love you gotta love those warranties. That that that's that's a, a smart thing. And make sure you you register them. 
I cannot believe how many people buy brand new products, spend a crap load of money and don't even bother completing the warranty card on these things until it's too late. And they realize that they don't have their old receipts or whatever it was, and they can't get the warranty done. Mm -hmm. Well, on that, managing your time, give us a sense of, um, you know, uh, on a personal level, you've got to be able to do something to balance out all of the hours that you're putting in to work. Uh, you know, uh, a little birdie told me that, uh, you're big into music, uh, playing the guitar. I, I used to be, um, I'm not so much anymore, but, uh, I used to be a pretty, uh, um, I don't know, kind of intense musician, I guess, but the last couple of years, I really haven't played much because I, I had an accident with one of my hands and uh, so it, it kind of hurts to play now. So I really don't need uh, that, that's sad. Uh, How does that affect your working, though? It, it doesn't affect it at all. The hand? It, it doesn't affect it. I mean, this was the hand. And it's just this this finger is a little shorter than it used to be. And it's skin on top of bone. So it, mm. it's uncomfortable to play. I can still play. Yeah, I, I would imagine that the fine, uh, just, just the fine movements uh, and pressure that's required on the playing of a guitar would be a lot different than just maybe gripping a handle or something. Yeah, it makes sense. The uh, so, what advice uh, from a, what was one of your biggest mistakes uh, that you've made in this industry? I'm trying to showcase what you've learned, positive and negative, uh, to those people who have been, you know, following your comments and your profile on our community. The biggest thing that I've, the biggest mistake I've made has been selling myself short, or underbidding, or you know, thinking that's too much to charge. I really should charge that. You know, and because in the end, it, if you don't price things right, you're not going to make any money doing it. You, yeah. You're basically going to be paying for the gas it takes to do it. And so just never sell yourself short. Know your worth. That, were you uh, were you uh, listening in on uh, that uh, pro networking session we did uh, Thursday Night Live about knowing your worth? I, I listened. I caught part of it. Yeah, that's that. That's one of our more popular uh, podcasts and videos on the networking session here in the community. Uh, it is amazing how many people get into this business without understanding how to price mm -hmm. products um, or understanding the profit margins or all of the various costs that go into it. So um, I'm glad that you raised that. Uh, not a lot of people are willing to admit that that's a hard lesson to learn. Uh, sometimes it is better to just walk away from a from a job. Uh, and not take it, then lose money on it. Um, you know, I've, I've had to do that. I could be best spent somewhere else. I've had to do that, and I've uh, I've intentionally. Well, I won't say I intentionally priced jobs too high because I I could have done it, but it wouldn't have been profitable for me to do it. And so I, I've intentionally did it too high, so the customer wouldn't, you know, want me to do it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's uh, there's something called pr uh, price to indifference. That if you've got a, it, and basically what the the rule is is if you uh, don't want, or if there's a client that's just pissing you off and it's just too difficult, simply rate don't don't fire them. Just raise the price to the point where their bs is worth putting up for because they're paying enough and if they're not prepared to pay for it then they walk away from you and if they are willing to pay well then good for you you're willing to put up with it and you make some extra bucks in the meantime uh, that was a lesson that i learned early on uh in uh, in my career so um give us then uh just to wrap things up here uh, a little bit uh what you said that uh, learning how to price um, or not under undervaluing yourself was one of your biggest mistakes. Now, give us uh, something that you've done really well. What is your key to success in your industry right now? I would say uh, my attention to detail uh, because I don't have I don't have two hundred clients, you know, so I don't have to go just speed, speed, speed. I can take my time and and you know, pay attention to the little things, make sure that I get every little leaf that I can, make sure that, you know, the edges are straight and everything. And I tell people that when I'm when I'm talking to a new 
customer, I tell them that that's what sets me apart is my attention to detail because I don't have to rush. And so I can take the time that it, may, you know, that it needs to, uh, to make it look right. Well, from the sounds of it, you have a lot of competition down there. So finding your unique differentiator amongst that competition Petition is uh, do you how do you other than just talking do you have any other marketing uh, or promotion that you do that highlights that differentiator for you? I uh, I take pictures of some of my my more intricate jobs and stuff. And I use those in my advertisements. I advertise on the next door app and I advertise on Facebook. Is that where the majority of your new leads are coming from, or is it from referrals from existing clients? It's a little bit of both. It's about half and half, but I do get a lot. I get a lot from uh, the next door app. Actually, yeah, I've been hearing a lot of people talking about that app and and how uh, how profitable it has been for them to be in it. Is it difficult to set up for somebody that doesn't really, you know, not familiar either with technology or not familiar with the app? No, not at all. Not at all. It's it's uh, as simple as making a Facebook page, pretty much. And what are the, how how expensive is it to uh, to be part of that community? The um, to actually well, because it's free, I haven't had to pay anything. So, but I, I think there is one that they charge for, but they they've never charged me. For it. Yeah, there are. You're, you're right. I was just curious uh, what your experience has been. There are free levels, and then there are paid levels for more exposure. Um, it's good to hear, though, that with a free account that you've been driving uh, a lot of business. Yeah, it's been, yeah. I haven't had any trouble at all. <laughs> I was actually kind of overwhelmed at first at how many people, you know, did start following. It was it was kind of neat. So um, I also wanted to uh, congratulate you on being a runner up winner in the Echo Means Business Backyard Grill Masters campaign. I don't know if those people listening. Uh, new uh, that you are one of our winners, which is fantastic. Um, so the what I saw from when we were monitoring the conversations, you jumped in pretty late into the the time period that we were running the contest, but you really uh, moved up quite a bit. Uh, was uh, you got now that you've won and it doesn't matter. You got to give us the secret. Were you actually spending a lot of time trying to drive those numbers up or did you just do what you needed to do? And then it the points added up on their own. I, they just added up on their own. I had no idea that that, uh, that, that was going to happen. It was a complete surprise to me when I won. I actually thought it was a joke, <laughs> but yeah, it just, if they went up on their own, that's good. So you're finding, um, I, I'm going to take a, a second here to maybe, that we don't do commercials in uh, in this community, but maybe I'll ask you to give us a little bit of a testimonial in your experience in joining the community and you know moving up the leaderboard, which you know you didn't try and do. Uh, how valuable have you been finding the community on Echo Means Business? Extremely bad. Um, there's a uh, little maintenance tips stuff that I that I didn't know. Uh, just little things that I just didn't know. And because you can never know enough. And I, every time I get on there and I get in the forums or I get watch the videos or something, I'll learn something every time. Oh, that's fantastic. So, yeah. so is it more, um, I'm curious now, just doing a little bit of market research uh, in front of whoever's watching this right now, is, uh, are you finding the, uh, the value uh, being more on the technical side, meaning, you know, product, product maintenance, product selection, or on business and business development type information that you're getting through the community? I've, I've been really learning more of the business side of it, you know, the business relation part, because, you know, this is new to me still running this. So I've been, I've been really, really trying to stoke up as much of that as I can. That's awesome. I'm sure that uh, Echo, our sponsor, uh, we'll be happy to hear that because that was their main purpose uh, in in asking us to build this community and manage it for them is that is that is to get guys like you uh, or women uh, that are looking to start a business, uh, maybe have never run a business before and to help you guys make your businesses grow uh, and make them stronger. So uh, that's really great feedback. I appreciate you hearing that. Thank you very much for participating in the community. Congratulations on winning uh, 
the runner-up uh, prize in our last sweepstakes. Uh, I'm sure we'll be doing more of those, so pay attention. For those of you listening, you missed out on this one. Keep your eyes open on echomeansbusiness.com or on the mobile app. We will be promoting uh, other promotions uh, coming up. And if you're at the GIE, we will be there with our uh, social media lounge. And there's going to be a ton of promotions and contests that we're going to be running there. So be sure to visit us uh, there. Thanks, Jason, for joining and for sharing a little bit of your story. Um, anybody that wants to connect with Thank Jason, you. look it up on member profiles. Uh, you'll see uh, Jason Curley, C-U-R-L-E-E. -E. Uh, reach out, friend them, ask questions, uh, help each other grow your businesses. Uh, and on that, uh, thanks, Jason, uh, once again. Thanks, all of you, for listening. And uh, stay tuned for our next Meet the Pro episode. Thanks for having me.